Yoga Plus. Download now for free. Hello and welcome to the Wellness Plus podcast. I'm your host, Karina Rachel, and I'm joined today by Dr. Nisha Khanna. She is a practitioner of functional Ayurveda, and she's here to talk to us today about clear skin and natural beauty. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Khanna. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be back. So I think with spring in the air, it's a great time to talk about how we can nourish our skin and from that aesthetic perspective, how we can attain that healthy, glowing, clear, beautiful skin that so many of us are after. So from a functional Ayurvedic perspective, what is your thought? Okay, great. Yeah, I love this question because um, it's such a misconception that what we put on our skin and the types of serums and you know facial beauty products, that that is the sole thing that determines the health of our skin. And although those are significant in their contribution, I would say the majority of healthy, glowing, beautiful skin comes from having a really good detoxification regimen um, that you maintain throughout uh, your daily life. And uh, with it being spring, we are sort of on the cusp of pitta season, which is in Texas, it gets warm pretty fast. Yes. And so we're just beginning that. And uh, summer upon us is the season of pitta or the predominant fire element. And that's when people can actually get a lot more breakouts and rashes because that's the nature of pitta and it runs through the blood. Um, and so this Ayurvedic understanding of healthy skin is really just a mirror of a healthy circulatory system. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that being the nature of the blood and the purity of the blood. Uh, it's a really beautiful, amazing, ancient concept um, to think about pitta and skin as being related to the liver and the spleen, which mm -hmm. are sort of the roots of that channel within the body. And so when I think of purification of the, the system, purification of the skin, and really healthy, beautiful skin, I think one of appropriate liver detox, and, um, and then that transfers to a really clean circulatory system. And then two, um, to what we call rasa datu, which is the first layer of tissue, and that's ha what that's the first layer of our system to be nourished. Mm -hmm. And I would say in Western medicine, it most easily equates with the plasma. And so there's various things that lead to a healthy plasma. Mm -hmm. um, some basic ones being hydration, but one of the more subtle things that I really like um, to think about as well is inspiration. And mm. that might not be directly intuitive, but somebody who is really happy and inspired um, and creative in their life, um, they tend to have better skin too because it's a reflection of a good lymphatic rasa datu. Wow. So definitely this idea that healthy skin comes from within. You know, I think it's something that we hear a lot, but then there can be this maybe disconnect between what we're putting into our bodies and the external appearance that we may have. Um, but it definitely makes sense since our skin is kind of the, um, you know, it's our external protection from things going out, but it's also the way that our body releases those things that it needs to let go of. Mm -hmm. So when you think about, you know, you had mentioned earlier, blemishes, breakouts, and how that's often associated with the pitta season. Can you talk more about that? Maybe what is the science behind breakouts and why we get that kind of red or blemishy skin? Right. Okay, great. So um, one comment is, yes, I want to emphasize that 
the skin is a major detox organ. And when your other pathways of major detox, so the liver through the colon, when those detoxification pathways are overwhelmed, then things back up into the skin. Mm -hmm. And so when you do get a breakout, it's one, a sign of a backup of toxicity that's now moved out into the circulatory system, out of the container of the GI tract where it would be normally purged through the colon, um, it's sort of been pushed out. And so it's getting pushed out through the skin. And I think that's one of the benefits of infrared sauna is really getting us to detox through the skin, through mm. the sweat. Um, and so in relate to so your question about Pitta and breakouts, I see it as sort of a twofold contribution. One is the toxicity or what we call ama in Ayurveda that has overwhelmed the system and now it's in the circulatory system. Um, and then two, it's an elevation in the Pitta element in mm. the, of, of the pitta, pitta element in the body. And so we all have varying combinations of vata, pitta, kapha, so the predominance of air and space, fire and water, and earth and water, respectively. And when any of those doshas get, are increased or decreased for what is our usual constitution or our baseline balance constitution, then it can manifest as those fiery red qualities that show up in the skin. Mm -hmm. And so that, that could be rashes or acne. And so, for example, with a pimple, I think elevated pitta, but I also think overwhelmed detox pathways. Yeah. So <laughs> when we think about uh, things like dark chocolate or potato chips being associated with breakouts, is that a true connection or? I think, I mean, I think the relationship there is that they, both those products or foods, increase the oily quality in the body. Mm. Um, they're higher in fats and, um, and so one of the qualities of pitta is oily. And so that could even occur by too much ingestion of nuts. So if you eat too many nuts, those are very high in that oily quality, and mm -hmm. then that will increase the oily quality of pitta in, um, that then shows up in the skin because it's, it's it be, the, the circulatory system, the blood being a primary pitta system, it naturally gets into that system and increases it. Does right. that make sense? Right. Okay. And then just to maybe like delve into that idea of fats, um, you know, I think it's important to differentiate like healthy fats versus those unhealthy fats like fried foods and most of the oils out there that are highly processed and who even knows what is in a lot of those processed foods. Um, but what about the role of healthy fats in the diet? Well, I would say if your diet is too high in fat, regardless of where what the source is, mm. it will be increasing the oily quality of pitta in the body. Um, however, there's other aspects that play into that. So um, if you're eating more processed foods, those are gonna create more ama. So that's gonna lead to more toxicity, mm. right? And then also um, some healthy fats like avocado and coconut oil are actually cooling to the system. So each substance in nature has a property, whether it's an herb or a food of being heating or cooling. And so having cooling fats like coconut oil, avocado, those are actually going to decrease that fiery warmth. And so um, I would say that if you're choosing fats for the summer, those would be the ones to do. Okay. Can you give some other examples of, of cooling fats? Because I love well, avocado and coconut oil, so I'm yeah. very happy to hear those too. And they're both, uh, I mean, higher temperature oils to cook with too, so that's great. Right. Um, well... Cooling food, well, ghee is also cooling. So um, ghee is actually a beautiful pitta reducer. Um, so in the ancient Ayurvedic texts, um, just drinking a little bit of ghee in the morning, first thing is one of the treatments for a, a pitta imbalance oh, of wow. various natures. So pitta doesn't just manifest in the skin, it can manifest in all the organs. So for example, in the stomach, it could show up as acid reflux. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the skin. Um, in the colon, it could be more like an ulcerative colitis or Crohn's or autoimmune conditions. Um, in the mind, it could be perfectionism. So um, so it's really amazing that this, uh, this element or thinking of our body as composed of these basic building blocks, w when you balance 
when you bring it into balance for you, it actually has this amazing effect of um, bringing your whole system into balance, mind, body, spirit. So, Definitely. Um, so other examples of cooling foods would be cilantro and mint. Those are some mm. real like nice favorites. And then cilantro has the added benefit of being really detoxifying. Um, and anything with sweet taste. So it doesn't, I don't mean sugar because it's highly processed, but the sweet taste is, is cooling because it's composed mm -hmm. of the earth and water element, which are considered cooling. And so, um, so let's see, an example of that would be, you know, like, I guess any of the coconut products. So coconut milk, um, like a rose coconut, <laughs> smoothie, you know, like <laughs> rose is cooling as well. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, rose and like a cardamom pudding, you know, like I'm thinking of sweeter, yeah. sweeter things. But even, um, even certain grains have a cooling property because they're part of the sweet taste. Um, and so in terms of taste then that are cooling, it's uh, sweet and bitter as well. So when you mentioned the dark chocolate, Dark chocolate has that bitterness, so mm -hmm. it's um, it's actually you know in some ways if you have it in moderation, you're getting a, the bitterness to sort of balance out whatever added oily quality is being promoted by that one food. Okay. Yeah. And then you know I definitely uh, hope hopefully most of our uh, listeners and or viewers. Um, kind of understand the difference between, you know, a typical milk chocolate bar compared to a dark chocolate, which is not as highly processed, is not going to contain the high fructose corn syrup and a lot of these other additives that are in most of the other candies. Mm -hmm. um, so actually having something like even the raw cacao nibs or a raw dark chocolate might actually be a chocolate that could be good for our skin. Yeah, I think so. And I think, um, the idea that chocolate causes breakouts isn't isn't like across the board true. Right. <laughs> um, just to complete the the taste, then the other one's astringent. So it's sweet, bitter, and astringent are all cooling. Okay. Yeah. So you had mentioned a little while ago about the infrared sauna mm -hmm. and this idea of sweating as a really great way for the body to detox. Uh, so here in Texas, I sweat a lot during the summer. Mm -hmm. um, is sweating in general something that we would consider good for our skin? Or is it something that you think like the infrared sauna gives you a more like purifying effect from sweating? So I guess infrared sauna versus just sweating because it's really hot outside. <laughs> yeah, and I guess keep in mind too that any induced heat, whether it's from being outside for a prolonged amount of time or being in a sauna um, could be too much heat for your system and actually cause breakouts. Right. Um, so there is that fine balance between detoxing through the skin and then overheating. So, right. um, so the infrared sauna versus um, exercise, I mean, my understanding of infrared sauna is that it's actually doing a much deeper detox, like the rays are um, supposedly penetrating the deeper layers of tissue, mm -hmm. and um, and then those toxins are being released. So I would say that if you're um, exercising and sweating versus just like sitting and sunbathing sweating, right. you're going to get more of a detox because okay. you're actually moving your lymph and moving your circulatory system so that any areas that are stagnant are now kind of moving out into circul moving into circulation and then out through the sweat glands. Okay. And then what about sweating from exercise as opposed to sitting in the sun sunbathing? <laughs> yeah, so so yeah, I would say you're getting a definitely more of a detox sweating from exercise, moving the lymph than sunbathing. Okay. But sunbathing's nice too. It is. It's very <laughs> nice. And then the vitamin D, I always think about that as yeah. I'm sunbathing. Mm -hmm. Um just to kind of, this is maybe out of left field, but do you have any feelings on cryotherapy? Kind of to take the other end of the spectrum from being really, really hot. Yeah. What about something that exposes us to very, very cold air? Is that beneficial for us? I, I haven't looked into it too much. Um, I, it really is dependent on your constitution. So mm. for somebody who's a vata predominant constitution, so that's air space element, being exposed to that extreme cold and then 
the fact that one, it's extreme, and two, it's cold, could be very aggravating for their system. Um, but there, you, you know, there is some debate about that. In Ayurveda, there is some thought that that extreme hot cold is actually not good for your system, good for your nervous system, mm. um, and can lead to more pathologies. But then, you know, a, a lot of other ancient thing, uh, thought believes that there is a lot of benefit between that constriction and release. And so I would say as long as you're moving your body and mm. getting your circulation going and having some kind of detox through your sweat glands, um, several times a week mm. you know I, I like the whole three to five times a week right. as um as a as a guideline to get things moving you you may very well accomplish the same thing that you're going to get from cryotherapy where you're constricting and then opening up again through mm -hmm. your blood vessels interesting so we've kind of gone a little bit into foods mm -hmm. surrounding skin um, and this idea of um, sweating, exercising, moving the lymphatic system, and really just in general, there's so many benefits to movement mm -hmm. that hopefully this is just another reason for people to make sure they're getting those three to five days a week of exercise. Uh, what would maybe be another component of our skin that maybe people don't think of as often? Yeah, so um, so we talked a bit about kind of the heating, cooling properties of food, um, and then also emphasizing detox through the colon and then through the liver. And so um, I would say one of the biggest issues for backup of toxins in the skin is incomplete bowel movements, not having enough bowel movements and so um, and enough quantity. And it surprises me in my practice that you know, some people, their constipation doesn't bother them. They're just sort of used to going to the bathroom every couple days, a few times a week. And um, I would say it's a big principle in both Ayurveda and functional medicine that a daily detox through the colon is imperative for good gut health mm -hmm. and good overall health. And so it's just like I talked about with the, the backup of, of the container mm -hmm. of the gut. When that gets backed up, um, and you may not even be uncomfortable. So people get used to um, sort of this level of inc infrequency. Right. Um, it will show up in the skin. And um, along those lines of detoxing through the colon, having a healthy mi microbiome is really important for good skin. So the microbiome in the gut is reflected on all surfaces of the body. Wow. So your skin, your mucosal surfaces, so the mouth, the vaginal tract, you know, the ear canals, all of these microbiomes in the nasal passages, all of them are mirrored. And I, I don't think that science has come up with how that actually works, but but it does. <laughs> and so if you have a healthy gut you ha in, your, in your gut, um, you have a healthy microbiome biome elsewhere as well. Mm -hmm. And um, and so there have been patients where I took them through um, like a gut healing detoxification cleanse. And it was amazing because one of the byproducts of doing that cleanse was that they had that they had the best skin that they had ever had wow. and maintained it, you know. And so, um, so it, it's a beautiful sort of byproduct, even if you're not going for that result, mm -hmm. and it just emphasizes the importance of detoxification. Um, so the uh, so that's through the colon, but then the liver dumps its toxins into the colon too. So maximizing liver detox is, is good too. And there's plenty of herbs that are specifically good for liver detox, both within Western and, um, and Eastern medicine. Mm -hmm. A few that come to mind would be things like milk thistle. Um, in, um, in Ayurveda, there's kutki. Um, and um, and it, it's very it's very similar to milk thistle, and then um, there's uh, a beautiful antioxidant herb called um, um, guduchi in Ayurveda that that detoxes the liver, um, and um, and even just a triphala, so triphala tablets, which are um, widely available mm -hmm. in most stores, um, Whole Foods and other health food stores on Amazon. As long as you buy an organic brand, it's great. Um, but it's got three bitter fruits that have been put into a tablet, and they all have um, detoxification benefits. Um, 
for each dosha. So it's something that's what we call tridoshic. Um, any dosha can take it and be balanced. Right. Um, and so uh, it has the antioxidant benefits as well as liver. Some one of the herbs does a really good liver detox and then cleansing through the colon too. And um, let's see. Can you spell that? Oh yeah, for yeah. our listeners. Yeah. So it's um, T R I P H A L A. Okay. Tripla. Yeah. And if you've never tried it, of course this isn't medical advice, but it would be really fun to um, to try it because some people have a really complete evacuation of the colon. Um, they relieve gas, bloating. It has side benefits of you know um, assisting with weight loss and um, more energy. So it's just kind wow. of this really beautiful herb uh, yeah, maybe we combo. Maybe need to do a podcast on triphala. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so. Um, yeah, trifle. But then the other one I wanted to mention that I think is super helpful for skin in particular is aloe vera gel. Okay. And so there is some debate about aloe vera gel. Um, some some schools of thought think that it's harmful to to the liver, but in my experience, in my tradition of practice um, through Ayurveda, it's actually very beneficial for, as a liver detox, and it has specific properties for helping the skin heal and give that rasa quality that I talked about, which is that smooth, um, really vibrant, healthy, glowy kind of skin. And so mm -hmm. it helps all your mucosal surfaces because the skin's related in that sort of epidermoid um, tissue. And so, um, so it does a gentle liver detox. It's profoundly cooling, so it helps um, helps reduce pitta. And then it's also um, mildly laxative. So if someone is having some issues with constipation, it will help with that. And one of the brands I really like is uh, Lily of the, I think it's Lily of the Desert or yeah. Lily, yeah, Lily of the Desert. <laughs> um, and you can um, get that at some health food shops. And um, I think the important thing is to get the gel, not the juice. Okay. So the the gel, it's sort of the goopy gel, and it can be hard to swallow for some people. You do get used to it, and um, and you can mix it up with other things like something bitter and astringent, like a cranberry or unsweetened cranberry, unsweetened pomegranate, and okay. um, and so that that would have the added benefit of reducing pitta from an astringent um, perspective. And I like to mix it, if I am gonna mix it, I make like a little mocktail with um, cranberry or um, pomegranate, some like Topo Chico, which is just so soda, bu bubbly water that's local here. Mm -hmm. And um, and then a couple tablespoons of the aloe vera gel. And it's wow. a delicious tonic to drink um, throughout the summer. So you're gonna be at the pool or, you know, out on a day trip, you can take that with you. And it's, um, and it's, it's very hydrating. It's very good for your skin, decreasing the pitta that might be increasing while you're out sunbathing. Right. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> So yeah, that's that's probably my favorite go-to for reducing pitta, and and then having that profound benefit of um, healing and beautifying the skin too. So those are a few examples of herbs. Um, yeah, <laughs> I love that, and it's so funny because I of course was using aloe vera topically like my oh. whole life, and mm -hmm. you know that's something that I think most of us are very familiar with, uh, but the idea of drinking aloe vera and you're saying to take the aloe vera gel mm -hmm. so you'd actually it's a separate product though right like yeah. you would not use the same product that you use on your skin no i mean you could use the food grade lily of the desert on your skin but you wouldn't use a skin or sunscreen product internally okay and um so you could make that cocktail, mocktail that I talked about, but um, you could also just, the way I do it for ease <laughs> is um, I just dump like a tablespoon on the tongue and chase it with water. Yeah. Uh, and you do like two tablespoons after say lunch and dinner. And one of the other benefits, because it does have that bitterness and astringency, is it gives you a sense of completeness after your mm. meal. So um, that's, that's really nice because sometimes after a meal we're craving dessert or we're craving sweets and, um, and just that under on the tongue swallowed gives you a sense of like, 
oh, okay, lunch is over and I don't need anything else, you right. know, and you can just move on, you know. Right. And it reminds me, um, in one of our earlier podcasts, you were talking about um, in Ayurveda, there's the five different tastes, mm -hmm. and then in oh, six. six different tastes. Mm -hmm. And then in each meal, you want to make sure that you have all six of those tastes represented in order to give the most satisfying and nutritionally complete meal. Yeah, and along those lines, the bitter and astringent are the last of those six tastes in the process okay. of digestion. So it's almost um, mirroring the closure that is going to happen through the process of digestion. Wow. Yeah. I love that. So that's a great tip. Aloe vera gel after a meal. Um, I'm going to have to go probably buy sprouts on my way home and yeah. get some because uh, I always see the aloe vera, aloe vera gel and I think, I just don't know. I just don't know. But now I'm going to go and yeah. try it. Well, um, <laughs> It can be too cooling for some people. So if it's cold outside or you're kind of just about, you feel like you're a little under the weather and you might mm. just be about to get a cold, then you wouldn't take aloe vera gel because that might tip you over. Okay. Um, but um, I have used it. For example, I just keep some in the fridge and it lasts for quite a while. Um, so if I find a pimple coming on, you know, and um, I just take a couple tablespoons of the aloe vera gel internally and the next day it's what would have maybe been like this bump that lasted or an eruption of some sort just goes down and it's, wow. yeah, so it's, it's kind of magical that way. Interesting. And then just out of curiosity, the aloe vera plant, if you were to just have the aloe vera plant, mm -hmm. could you just cut the leaf open and, yeah, you definitely and, could. and eat that gel out of the plant itself? You could as long as it's an organic plant that is meant for food consumption. Okay. You know, because there are like lots of, there's lots of aloe like growing around town. <laughs> right. <laughs> you wouldn't just cut that. Um, but, but, um, but yeah, that would probably be actually the best. Yeah. Um, if you can cut that leaf or, yeah, succulent um, daily and then squeeze out the gel, mm -hmm. that's even better than the bottled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was I said bottled because it's more convenient for most right. people. And that's definitely probably the most likely mm -hmm. uh, way that people would be taking it. But um, I do get a lot of emails and questions of people that will ask me, you know, you recommended this product, but I actually have this plant. Can I just use the plant? So, yeah. so I always like to ask that because I think it's very interesting. And, you know, there's so many people out there who uh, maybe have a garden in their backyard or just mm -hmm. lots of plants inside. And yeah. I always love to encourage people to have more plants. So Yeah, love. and I mean medicinal ones at that. So um, I don't think the conversation, at least these days, can be complete about um, things that you can do food-wise to, um, to improve your skin without se uh, mentioning celery juice. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you've heard of the kind of momentum behind celery juice lately, but um, I have found it to be really helpful for patients with skin conditions. Mm. Um, it is thought to do that gentle liver detox and also stimulate digestion, which is going to decrease AMA, essentially, because digestion more digestive enzymes is, um, is, has an inverse relationship between um, toxicity and enzymes. So the more you digest, the better you digest, wow. the less toxicity you create. And so in boosting digestion, thought to be increasing HCL, and also, which is hydrochloric acid, um, and increasing liver detoxification. It has that dual property of, um, of helping the skin heal and um, releasing those toxins that have built up over time. Wow. And on a side note, I know you said not to mention this, but you did mention that you had celery juice for breakfast. <laughs> so I'm glad that you, that you were able to talk about that. Yeah. Um, I see so many different, I guess, kind of trends come and go with different types of juices. And mm -hmm. there was like cabbage soup diet and all yeah. these different things. Um, so I think it's really nice to um, have someone kind of talk about why, <laughs> you know, so why are we going to drink celery juice kind of as an example. Um, and then my question would be, how do you feel about um, I guess from the food com combining perspective, what if you were to go to the juice bar and get like celery, cilantro, and maybe like some apple to sweeten it or something like that? Mm -hmm. Or do you think there's a benefit in just having the celery juice by itself? Yeah. Um, one thing I do want to say before I answer that question is um, a lot of the information around celery juice is coming from Anthony Williams or the medical medium. Mm. Um, 
I would. I don't believe that that information has been scientifically proven yet, um, but clinically, I've seen it be really helpful. Um, and so, with regards to food combining, um, since celery and cilantro are both in the vegetable category, there's no issue there. Okay. I. Um, through his information, through Anthony Williams' um, information, having that plain glass of celery juice first thing in the morning without adding anything to it is supposed to boost its um, properties for okay. detox, hydration, um, and boosting enzymes. However, yet from a purely food combining perspective, mixing it with cilantro at a different time of day uh, wouldn't be a problem at all. There is the idea, specifically in Ayurveda, of keeping fruit separate. Right. Um, and I think I mentioned it in one of our prior podcasts that because it's already been sort of masticated by the juicer, mm. um, the, the apple that is, it is, in my opinion, unlikely to have as great of a food combining sort of negative effect than, um, than if you were to eat the apple whole um, and mix it with, say, cooked celery, um, you know, or a soup, you know, because then you're mixing hot, cold, mm. and fruit and vegetables. Um, but I think it really does come down to that unique person and their ability to digest. And so if they right. have really strong agni or a digestive fire capacity, then they can tolerate those sort of mild inconsistencies better than someone who's having a lot of bloating and a lot of sort of GI distress. Mm -hmm. I will tell you personally, I have mixed the apple, celery, and cilantro together because that's also one of his um, detoxifying tonics with ginger added. Mm. And um, I don't know if it's the profound detox, detoxifying um, p components of cilantro and the celery together. But if I take that tonic at bedtime, or like not right at bedtime, but as a after dinner, maybe a couple hours after dinner, or mm -hmm. substituting um, for dinner in some cases, then um, I, I feel really good. <laughs> I awesome. feel I feel really detoxified. Um, cool. So so just anecdotally with me um, and my digestion, I haven't noticed an increase in ama or toxicity from making that combination. Mm -hmm. But then again, that's my unique circumstance. And right. for um, a patient that I'm working with, I'd have to assess for them if that level of food combining would be appropriate. Right. And then I um, another food that I eat a lot of in the summertime is cucumber. Mm -hmm. So I think like maybe cucumber with the cilantro. I, I love the idea of like ginger too. So cilantro, celery, cucumber, ginger mm -hmm. might be like my new like go-to summer juice. <laughs> yeah, well cucumber is beautiful for um, pitta as well. It has a profound cooling property. Mm. And so um, so that combination, cucumber, celery, cilantro, and then just adding a little bit of ginger to help the whole thing be even more digestible. Um, taking too much ginger internally, um, even if it's fresh ginger, could be pitta increasing. Okay. So um, I would say if it burns your mouth while you're drinking it because of the spiciness mm -hmm. of it, then it's too much for you. Okay. Yeah. Just a little bit of ginger. Yeah. And I think that because it has such a strong taste, most people are probably not going going super heavy on the ginger unless in they're, general. Yeah, unless they're already pitta constitutions and they do everything oh, yeah. to the extreme. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, this is really working because it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have heard that before. You're definitely right. <laughs> so to maybe switch gears a little bit, can we talk about the topical beauty care products? <laughs> yeah. There are so many of them that honestly, I just feel completely overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm in the store and I'm looking at things, I just have no idea what to choose or what's going to be good for my skin. Do you have any guidelines <laughs> maybe yeah. for what can help lead us to the actual topicals that are going to help our skin? Yeah, so I, that is dependent on the type of skin you have. But I would say, um, I would say that it is important to exfoliate about once a week just to really promote that smooth texture. And um, one of the favorite things I like to do is um, sort of like an Ayurvedic facial with um, some some ground turmeric and a little bit of rose, 
maybe just a little bit of sandalwood powder if you if, if it's available to you and these things come at, already made as like a dry powder mask and you just mix it with a little water and then do a mild little exfoliation with your fingertips so it's not a heavy duty exfoliation mm -hmm. but it is it is really nice in terms of the results to get a beautiful glow. Right. Um, and I used it today. <laughs> and your skin looks beautiful. <laughs> Side note. Um, so <laughs> it's, um, there is a, a brand that I like. Um, it's called the Ayurvedic Experience. And um, I did do, I think, a commercial or ad for them. And it was sort of like I just wanted to, you know, experience these products mm -hmm. and it's the one one of the products that I would say I'd buy again even if it wasn't a free sample nice. you know what I mean yeah. because it's just really really good they have it comes in a powder form and it has the turmeric already bl uh, blended with the other herbs um, and I think they use um, a dal or lentil flour to mm. give you even more of that sort of gritty exfoliation property and um and there's something about the turmeric that they use that it isn't going to stain your face yellow. Okay. Um, so that might be something that if people are experiencing or experimenting at home that they may have n noticed that, oh, no, I'm not going to put this on my face. It's going to go yellow. Right. But, um, I mean, I do have a darker skin tone, so I, but I haven't seen any yellowing of my skin by using it once mm -hmm. a week. And um, there's various ways you can apply it. So some suggestions are to let it dry and then, wash it off um, but I usually don't take the time to do that and I and I still feel like it works and I nice. just <laughs> put a little bit in my palm and add a little water and then just go like that in the shower um, and um, but you but the beautiful thing about Ayurvedic face masks is you can mix different ingredients depending on what type of skin type you have so wow. if you um, if you need more of the um, nourishment you can use coconut milk or other types of milks um, to to give it more of a moisturizing property mm -hmm. um, some in some cases you can actually mix it with a little honey and milk um, or y you know depending on your your phil philosophy so some people you know if they're vegan they're not going to use either of those and then water would still be quite effective um, and so um, it's a nice sort of basic product that you can then add things to it and I think yeah. on the instruction sheet they actually give you some suggestions of what to add um, so that's one and so it's a, a weekly exfoliation at least I would say weekly um, maybe mo not more than two to three times a week and um, and then it's it's really important to um, apply serums these days I've seen uh, just profound benefit by adding some oil onto the skin mm. and I think people with oily skin might say well I'm not going to put oil on my face but even oily faces need that level of hydration and a lot of the serums have essential oils added that are anti-inflammatory and mm. anti-microbial uh, so they they don't cause breakouts because they have these added benefits and um and yet sesame oil, just plain sesame oil, is thought to be a natural antimicrobial. So, okay. and coconut oil as well. So, um, so I think if you if you you know look into some serums, you'll be able to find something within your price range because those do tend to be more expensive. But mm. given sort of our aging skin, and I mean it, you can never start too early. I don't think like past your 20s or so <laughs> but but when you get into your 30s and then 40s like having that extra um extra hydration mm. through serums is really nice so making sure you're on a serum as well and then um in in ayurveda there's this beautiful product called a kansa wand and i would say it equates to the benefits of a jade roller okay but I like it much better than a jade roller, maybe because I'm just partial because it's Ayurvedic, but um, <laughs> but it, it it feels amazing. And so um, you could look that up. It's K-A-N-S-A, -S Kansa. And then on YouTube, they have videos on how to use it. And um, so what it is, it's like a little wooden handle with um, 
a five metal alloy on the end. And so it's cool to the touch, but as you use it, it warms up. And so you could you you could take the serum that you're using and actually massage that in, like put a mm. couple drops onto the wand and then a couple drops onto the skin itself and then massage that in and you kind of do it in this um, circular motion going over energetic points on the face or marmas. There's so many energy points on the face and so as you stimulate those, you're relaxing your nervous system and you're also just bringing this like juice or rasa to the face which is this cleansing purifying liquid the lymph you're moving it so um, I really like that and um, I'm not trying to advertise or anything but I my sister does have a serum that I really like and I've been using for the past couple months um, and um, and so she just created this line and um, it's pretty mid-range in price Cool. And what's it called? It's called S. Let me see if I get it right. S K Inner Beauty. Um, but she might kill me if I didn't get that right. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I think it's S K Beauty. Yeah, S K Beauty. Um, cool. Yeah, and um, she's just getting started. So I don't know that she has a website up yet. But she's been fulfilling orders um, over the phone, Wonderful. and she's she's on Instagram and Facebook and all of that. That's a, probably a good way to get in touch with her. Um, cool. But you know, really any serum. So um, so we talked about serum, the wand, exfoliation. Um, and then I would say some type of acid is really good too. I, I really like, uh, so there's some plant-based acids um, through fruit acids, um, and, and I really like AHA, so alpha hydroxy acid. Um, it's, you know, it's, it could be used a few times a week and you know, you wanna make sure that you're um, using a product line that you're not just putting acid on your face, you know what I right. mean? But like a, a beauty line. And, um, and then just applying that at night, it's pretty amazing to smooth the skin. Wow. And so, um, and then of course sunscreen, I think, I mean, I love the sun. I mean, you might be able to see how tanned I am, but um, I, yeah, as you age, it's just, you notice more and more each year, there's another darker spot or a mm. sunspot or, you know, wrinkling around the eyes. And so um, I always wear big sunglasses when I'm out in the sun and um, just to cover this delicate eye area. Yeah. And um, and also, um, also put some degree of sunblock on my skin, right. like a nice natural one. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you mentioned acid, I thought, um, I see a lot of uh, hyaluronic acid mm -hmm. out there these days, and there's like a million different <laughs> companies selling this hyaluronic acid. Is that something that would be beneficial in that kind of category of acids for the skin? I think so. If I rem remember correctly, the AHA is stronger. Okay. Um, but, you know, that's just my sort of own research and delving in mm -hmm. you know I I don't I wouldn't call myself a skin expert or anything <laughs> other than how to do it from the inside out <laughs> right right and how to care for your skin yeah and um, I think that that's definitely been a theme that's come up several times in our conversation is that there's really no one single remedy mm -hmm. for everyone in terms of you know the masks and the topicals and and really finding something that's going to have that perfect synergy with your body and the state that maybe it's in at that time of year like mm -hmm. the products that we need might actually change in the heat of the summer versus the cold of the winter um, so just encouraging people to really see what works for them mm -hmm. and knowing that just because this product is raved about by this one person doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have the exact same results when you use it yourself yeah there is some trial and error there but I would say that you know sticking to those broad categories and finding something that works for you within each of those categories is great. And then also, um, I, I mean, I really love getting regular detoxifying facials. So, um, and I recommend that to a lot of women who are struggling with um, with how to keep their skin smooth and clear. And um, and so I would say by regular, I mean like every six weeks or so, okay, roughly around that mark, and. Primarily because even if you are really great about everything you're putting in your body and how you're detoxifying and you're doing your daily skincare regimen, um, working with a facialist, esthetician that um, 
that is really good at extractions can be so helpful in, ter- mm. in terms of maintaining that beautiful um, smoothness and, and surface and preventing deeper and more kind of aggressive breakouts. And, um, and so my experience, I tried a lot of different <laughs> estheticians in every city that I've lived in um, because I have been, have been regular with the facials. Mm-hmm. And, um, and m- overall, I would say that most estheticians don't give you an aggressive enough purification. Mm. Um, and they're really nervous to remove blackheads and really nervous to poke at any bumps. And um, I have found that actually using a, a tiny little prick with a needle that's a, 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 a you know technique that some uh, skincare specialists do mm-hmm. um, to ease the extraction helps you helps prevent you from having this um, sort of rupture to the skin that mm. would be much more severe if you um, were trying to manually extract it. Right. And so there's a level of a, t- a tiny little prick, and then um, and then extracting after that once you've all already sort of eased the channel of um, extraction. So um, I've been working with someone in town. I don't know if that's helpful to give a recommendation for people who are local. Um, But her name's Stephanie, and um, she has a company called Austin Skin Care Co. And you can find her online, and um, she's just a lovely person, too. And um, and so I go see her. I actually need to go see her in the next week or so. Um, but, yeah, she, she, does, she does a great job with extractions. And yeah. I did try several places in town, and it was just like this gentle, relaxing facial, and you get your hands massaged, and, you know, and lots of, like, nice masks, nice smelling masks. But I'm like, no, no, that's not the facial that I'm going for. I need the purification, you know, yeah. and you can skip the massage. Massage. I can get a massage from a masseuse, but I want my facial, you know, okay. <laughs> to cool. be effective. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. and thank you for, like, kind of explaining all that because that is really, I think, important for us to know. Mm-hmm. And when we are going to go out and invest in one of these things to care for ourselves, we want to make sure that we're getting the, the best you know, option for us and somebody who's really going to provide something Mm -hmm. um, that's beneficial and hopefully will actually change the state of our skin uh, rather than, like you said, just giving us, which stress relief on its own, Yeah, just like to say, it's probably also really good for the skin, kind of aligns with what you were saying earlier about people who are kind of inspired Mm -hmm. and have that kind of sense of purpose tend to also have really clear skin. I'm kind of curious, you know, you were talking about the different uh, exfoliating masks, Mm -hmm. and I've seen probably hundreds of, like, DIY at-home recipes for face masks. Mm. Things like honey and cinnamon or avocado, or I think I saw one that was, like, orange and... I don't even remember. But anyway, so can you maybe give any ideas of like if people were going to make a DIY at home mm-hmm. mask, maybe some some do's and don'ts, so to speak, like ingredients that are probably OK and maybe things that you don't want to put on your skin? Yeah, I would say um, I haven't done a lot of do, do it yourself masks because I've really gone for the sort of that blend that I told you about with a little bit of rose, sandalwood, turmeric. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's the do-it-yourself, you know, um, powder that you can make if you have each of those unique powders. But um, just kind of what I've picked up through training um, is in Ayurveda and maybe going to some workshops was um, you can use avocado you can even use like I think the skin of the avocado to exfoliate a little bit Um, and um, coconut coconut milk um, even ghee is amazing as as an ingredient in a face mask Um, but I don't have like a go-to you know three ingredient or anything like that like things that are in your fridge but I would say that you know, food is medicine, what you're taking in internally and also putting on your body. And so it, it food, it, the and things in your fridge definitely have the potential to um, the effects that they have internally to have the same effect on the, the skin surface. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I would say you can get creative, but probably don't put like, I don't think cinnamon would be good just because it's, you know. It's hot. Yeah, and a lot of citrus. I mean, it has the acid that um, that could be helpful in giving a little exfoliation, but um, 
you know, it'd probably be good to just look at what properties of foods are good for pacifying pitta um, mm. internally and then use those as a mask. Okay. And then while you were talking, I remembered that um, strawberries was another one. Mm. And then I was thinking, oh, yeah, maybe it would give you, like, some exfoliation. Like the fruit acids, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think a lot of the Beauty Line products were created because they looked at these foods and said, oh, okay, strawberry, okay, pumpkin, you know, that mm -hmm. these things have these properties. And so um, I, I think there's a profound area for the food on your face <laughs> to be, to be, <laughs> I like this, yeah, play with your food. <laughs> yeah, for it to be um, really helpful. And that's how a lot of these beauty products were derived is mm -hmm. seeing that this equals this. Uh, I just don't have a lot of the knowledge in it to be able to tell you, you know, use these ingredients for a mask. Yeah. Right. And then the classic, um, like cucumbers over the eyes, mm -hmm. is that something that you would recommend? Well, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I don't have, like, a position on it. I think it feels good. It does. <laughs> and, and honestly, because cucumbers are so cooling, they help with the pitta that's in the eyes. And so um, I talked about the blood as being a pitta organ. The eyes are as well. And so it makes a lot of sense that adding this cooling compress to your eyes is going to reduce the pitta, which could show up as um, uh, various things like, you know, actual pathologies within the, within the eye, anything that you think of as red or aggressive, but um, but just to balance out that organ. Mm. And so I guess thinking through it, cucumbers are probably really good for your eyes, and that's why they are shown on TV yeah. and like other, <laughs> and that's why people do them. So, right. yeah. um, so um, I guess I wanted to mention just a bit more about rasa, the, the lymph tissue. Mm -hmm. um, and rasa is our lymph, it's our liquid, it's that plasma, it's the first sort of, and I'm interchanging those words, I know it's not specifically translating that way, but um, it's, it's sort of our lubrication in our body, our major, um, major system of lubrication, and mm. so maintaining hydration is really important for clear skin too, clear, mm. supple, beautiful, smooth skin, um, to be constantly sort of flushing that organ. Um, and I don't mean constantly um, where you have more than, you know, say 100 to 150 ounces of liquid a day, um, but, but to do it daily. Right. And, um, and then another, another piece, like I would say the last piece regarding beautiful, or, you know, beautiful skin, beautiful, you know, um, sense of being is um, what we call tejas, which is the super fine essence of pitta. When that's sort of awake and balanced, it shows up in in your in your whole demeanor, which radiates out through the skin mm. as um, as sort of like this radiance and this shining of of self, and um, and that is is related to this idea of inspiration. It's sort of like our inner fire or our inner sun, you know, um, that is bringing that radiance to our being. Mm. And so um, I guess it's a good point to close on. We've kind of talked about the physical body, but also the the subtle body of feeling um, both inspired, but just really joyful to be alive. And, you know, when that's the case, no matter, you know, what's going on, like people will say, hey, you're glowing, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just, it comes from cultivating happiness and, mm -hmm. and being grateful and having that happiness show through you. And so, um, so that's all. <laughs> oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, I'm just curious, you know, as we're kind of going over maybe the, some of the common myths and misconceptions around skin, um, cause there's so much, uh, you know, around this topic of makeup. And I think it's something that as women and as men now too, or men are getting much more into wearing makeup as well. Um, this idea of, you know, kind of caking our face mm. with products that are in a lot of cases toxic. And then of course you kind of have a big gamut of maybe like ultra toxic makeup products to the other end of the spectrum of like supernatural, super organic products. Where on that spectrum do you think is important to be or maybe what role does that play? 
because it can yeah. get really expensive if you're trying to always buy the natural organic makeup. Mm. Um, but is that an important thing for people to make that investment in? I think so. And I honestly, I don't promote using any kind of, I guess unless you're on screen or, you know, um, <laughs> or yeah, on screen, then there is this issue with needing um, a foundation or a powder or something like that. But my experience has been that if you're doing everything that we've already talked about, working internally and then you have kind of a, a good base regimen for your day to day, um, you won't need makeup. Mm -hmm. Like your skin will be beautiful, radiant, you know, shiny in the right places um, without any foundation, any powder. And um, I, I've I can count on my fingers the number of times I've worn foundation. And I, I wasn't or, or always like blessed with, you know, beautiful skin. I was that wasn't me. Throughout my teens and even into my late twenty or early twenties, um, I would get breakouts, I would be worried about the contouring and the you know, all of that and um and covering things up and um and it wasn't until I learned about the importance of cleaning up your diet and your gut and all of those other things that then the skin just took off, you know, wow. as being really the thing that people compliment me on. And so, um, and the happiness component as well. Right. <laughs> so, so, um, so yeah, I, I don't typically promote using a base or a foundation or anything because it's been my experience through both myself and working with patients that, that, that usually isn't necessary if you're doing everything else right. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then as far as natural makeup, you know, in Ayurveda we put oils on the body um, as a way to, it, with the intention or the knowledge that those are going to affect the system, the nervous system, on a deeper level. And so we're using the skin as a, as a medicinal vehicle. Mm. You know, it's like putting something in your mouth; you put it on your skin. Oh, yeah. And so. Um, so along those lines, I um, I think that we underestimate how much we're absorbing through our skin, mm. and um, and so I'm I'm pretty you know fat hard and fast about using only natural makeup, and it might be a really nice color, a really nice texture, lipstick or whatever, um, but um, I just I don't get the brand names that I that like Chanel or things like that if I don't know that yeah. they're natural. And honestly, the natural makeup is probably cheaper than the brand makeup. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, I've used um, Beauty Counter is one that I really like. Um, there's one that I was thinking about checking out. I don't know if they do makeup or if it's just skincare, but it's called True Botanicals. I've used okay. Honest Beauty, um, some of their products. So. Um, any eyeliner or definitely I would say the thing to be most careful about it being natural is things that are going to directly be in contact with your um, inner mucosa right. so your lipstick and your eyeliner and um, and then you know I don't I don't wear much makeup I just wear lipstick eyeliner and blush and so um, so those it's pretty easy for me to just make sure that those are kind of natural organic yeah i have heard though that some some mineral based makeup could overload your mineral level as well so oh. um i guess it depends how much you're wearing and right. um but i would say that if you're trying to decide natural versus not the natural is more inexpensive and also better for you mm -hmm. And yeah, I definitely know what you mean about the, um, yeah, the eyes. I've even noticed um, over the years, you know, if I were to use, you know, like a cheap eyeliner or something like that, like I can actually feel my eyes mm. getting really irritated. Um, and even now that I use, you know, more, try to use more natural makeup, sometimes, you know, my eyes will just like feel irritated from wearing it. And I'm like, I don't think we're really supposed to be wearing makeup because <laughs> well, it kind of just doesn't feel... You know, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily make your skin feel great. Um, and so I kind of love that your your message is that, hey, like we do these things to take care of ourselves and then we're actually going to save all this money on the foundation and the powder and the concealer and all of these different things that, um, you know, I think about it just like, why do I want to like 
plug up all my pores with a bunch of things <laughs> when yeah. like our skin wants to breathe. Um, so yeah, more often than not, I'm not wearing any makeup. I might be wearing like mascara or something. Mm -hmm. I do when I go on camera, put a little bit more makeup on. Um, I really love this brand Pacifica. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably not like the far end of like natural organic but it's, uh, it's easy for me to find, it's affordable for me, and I love the way that it feels and it doesn't irritate mm. my skin or my eyes, which was something that um, was a kind of a big problem for me. I guess that was more maybe like in my teens and 20s when, you know, when you're young and you're just buying like all the cheap makeup at yeah. the, you know, uh, Walgreens or whatever. But um, there's there's a, an eyeliner in um, Ayurveda called Kajal that's actually really therapeutic for your eyes. So I um, need this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, it does smudge pretty easily. So you just have to, you know, kind of look at yourself throughout the day and make okay. sure you're not like, you know, smudged up. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I, I love it because knowing that that um, that is this like very direct place in which you're putting makeup, mm -hmm. um, it um, it's it's got a little bit, of, it's usually made with some castor oil and some other um, Ayurvedic herbs that are very soothing and cooling for the eyes. Mm. And so I actually feel like my eyeliner is medicine, you know, and yeah, like it, it's really nice. And I've been, I've been doing that for at least five to seven years and just never wear any other eyeliner or eye makeup or eye shadow or anything like that unless maybe it's a special occasion I might wear a colored eyeshadow mm -hmm. um, but but for the most part kind of my daily um, eyeliner is 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 medicinal and yeah. and you can um, buy those online um, I think they have them on Amazon and just make sure that it's not that the ingredients are everything that's listed is natural because there's a lot of different sort of variations on it. Mm -hmm. I've I've used the Himalaya brand and I think there's another one that I've used. I just can't remember their name right now. Um, but what I typically do is I'll apply that and then take a little smudge brush and then sort of s smudge it purposefully so that it doesn't have as much you know product to move around on its own. Right and. Right. Um, yeah, I really like that. And I guess to your point about the more you take care of yourself kind of inside out, you um, the the less you need in terms of makeup. It, you know, makeup for me feels like um, just like a celebration, you know, like yeah. I get to get to, you know, have this match my outfit or, you know, whatever, or mm -hmm. just kind of like boost, boost how I feel that day. But, um, but one of the other kind of benefits is that you can, when, when you clear your skin from the inside out, you begin to feel more beautiful without makeup too, yeah. you know, and you can wake up and, you know, be next to your partner and not feel like, oh my God, I need to go to the restroom and like touch the space <laughs> up, you know? Right. Um, so, I mean, there's all these layers to kind of self-confidence and beauty. And I, I do think that the outer world and inner world are always communicating and mm. so sometimes we put on a nice dress and we feel better about ourselves or sometimes you know we feel so good after a meditation or something that it doesn't matter what we're wearing you know right. um so they're they're in constant communication and i don't think that they're exclusive so that you know oh like we you know you only have to cultivate the inner beauty and then the outer one is whatever you know because right. i feel like um you know the purpose of this conversation um is, is to acknowledge that we have these beautiful bodies that are worth mm -hmm. celebrating and adorning. And, um, and you can be a really spiritual person and a good person and, you know, live your life from this place of joy and gratitude and service and, um, and still put on makeup and, you know, wear a nice outfit and, mm -hmm. and really just, um, y if you think about sort of from a spiritual standpoint of the Indian tradition of, um, female goddesses, you know, they're fully adorned in the temples mm -hmm. yeah, with, you know, they're decked out like they're getting married, you know, yeah. with, with long, you know, multiple necklaces and jewelry and, um, and rich fabrics and, um, and you know, fully maquillaged, and um, and so my take on that is that we're here to celebrate our existence and um, and use whatever tools are at our disposal um, to do that, mm -hmm. and um, 
and to really honor our bodies because that's our vehicle in, wor in this world. Um, it's the vehicle for our spirit. I love that. I want to thank you so much for sharing all of this with me. I'm going to definitely be stopping by the store for aloe vera juice on my way aloe vera gel, gel <laughs> on my way home um, and maybe getting myself a bunch of celery and cucumber to juice over the weekend because mm -hmm. I just love that and that's one of my favorite juices anyways I just it feels so um, I don't know rejuvenating to mm -hmm. drink it especially when it's warm outside and you just drink this delightful cool kind of light green juice yeah yeah <laughs> um, it is so so nice so I want to thank you so much for being here and I can't wait to have you back on the program again soon okay thank you definitely I want to thank all of you for tuning in to the program today, and I hope that this has shared something valuable and inspirational for you to bring into your own life as well. If you would like to learn more about Dr. Nisha Khanna, you can visit nishakhannamd.com. You can also visit wellnessplus.tv to see even more of our premium content and our entire archive of podcasts in this video viewing setting. Or if you are just listening, you can find all of our podcasts on your favorite podcast platform. Thank you all for listening. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and be sure to come back and join us again soon. We're the only country in the world that separates the mind from the body. Yeah, the only country. I'm joined today by Athena Jezik and Norden. Dr. Paula Bruno. The body has a natural ability and tendency to want to heal. It doesn't have to be complicated or costly. I can talk science. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk science for sure. We do often need to supplement with magnesium. An unbalanced life will mm. be Vitally important to make sure that the entire system is opened up. Actually, happiness and suffering are states of mind. They're not external things. Do you have any recommendations for our <laughs> listeners? Do you use a tennis ball? Try a HIIT workout. You only got to do 20 minutes. Every day, having a practice for yourself. We're not powerless right, to improve our situation. Welcome to the Wellness Plus Podcast. Introducing Yoga Plus. Offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus, download now for free.